Girl, did you say fat? Yeah, I did. Guys, it's a word. Relax. It's just a word. Let's talk about it. Are we really supposed to believe that we need to go to medical school to understand how to take care of our own bodies? Like, it's not that deep. Am I fat right now? I don't know. I'm certainly overweight. And medically speaking, I guess clinically, I'm still technically obese, okay? It's not a pretty word, but nothing that we're talking about is pretty. We're talking about taking control of our health. Hey guys, hi, welcome back. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that word. I'm on a live view. Today's video we're gonna be talking about is why being fat will make you um, unalive. And yes, guys, like I said in the intro, I'm gonna use the word fat because that's what we're talking about. And if you saw my video from last week, I was talking about visceral fat. That's what we're talking about. This is the deadly fat that can unalive you early. So I'm gonna tell you the real quick and dirty about why this stuff is so problematic. And I know I should have to give this disclaimer because YouTube's like ratcheting down the controls. I am not a doctor. I am not a medical professional. I am just a person with a body and access to the internet who has over the years accumulated way too much information about all of this and I am sharing it with you because if you are also on a weight loss journey, there may be some days a number on the scale is just not enough to keep you going but knowing all the ways that losing weight is gonna help your body may be the thing push you past the next cheeseburger resistible piece of cake. Let's get into it. It's like no shortage of the number of ways that being fat cause you health problems. There are probably 20, 30 different ways, but in this video, I'm really only gonna stick to like the main three. Heart disease, high cholesterol, and type two diabetes. And we're gonna go over like the 101 version about why are these things problematic? Let's start with heart disease. Okay, heart disease is the number one killer of women for reasons that, because when a woman says that, you know, she's having this problem or that problem, Medically speaking, it may be disregarded by the medical professionals that she's in front of, as opposed to if a man were to say the exact same thing, perhaps an EKG would be ordered. Regardless of the reason, there are 600,000 people every year in the United States alone that die from heart-related diseases. Yeah, that's a lot. And more than half of them are women. It is the number one killer of women. <laughs> and that's funny because you thought it would have been men's bullshit, but it's not. It's heart disease, stroke, heart attack, heart arrhythmias, all the things. Why is being fat so hard on your heart? I mean, guys, there are a lot of reasons. I'm just gonna give you like the number one reason why I personally think that these things are problematic. Okay, so you have a heart fat around, visceral fat around the heart. It's called excess pericardial fat. And when you have too much of that, it causes inflammation. And that inflammation can cause something called athero atherosclerosis. I'm probably not saying that 100% right. Again, not a doctor. Is that buildup of plaque inside your arteries, AKA you're in heart attack city now. We don't wanna go there. So again, guys, this isn't meant to be a medical lesson. This is me tying these big terms that we hear to fat and saying, why are these things a problem? Too much visceral fat is gonna lead to excess pericardial fat, fat around all of your organs, not just your heart. You can have fat around your liver, your kidneys, your blood vessels, all the things, okay? But I'm talking about heart specifically, so excess pericardial fat can cause those problems. Let's say this is the inside of your artery, and this artery, right, all of your, this is how your blood flows. Your blood has to flow through them, so when they're unobstructed like this, they're they're open, no problem. But let's say that I had a bunch of little teeny tiny baby sized Tic Tacs and I started to glue them to the inside of this. Well, you can see that over time, that would mean that the blood flow would not smoothly. Increased visceral fat leads to a buildup of fat around the heart. That leads to atherosclerosis, which is the buildup of plaque in your heart. And that leads to heart attack. We have two, type two diabetes. 80% of obese people have diabetes. 80%. So, I mean, it's it's not a stretch to see that those two are very clearly tied together. Why does having an excess amount of body fat, obesity, whatever you wanna call it, why does that lead to type two diabetes? Well, for a whole host of reasons, but I'm trying to give you one thing for each of these that you can kind of like lock on to. When you have an excess amount of fat, those fat cells, your body is in a chronic state of inflammation. Inflammation, the sterile kind, meaning the kind that is caused by not like an active infection, like you're sick or something, chronic state of inflammation causes your cells and your tissues to malfunction over time. One of the ways that it malfunctions is insulin resistance. That is the cell's ability to no longer properly respond to insulin. Over time, flash forward, what do you end up with? Type two diabetes. Being overweight, 
leads to inflammation, leads to insulin resistance, insulin and last but certainly not least is high cholesterol okay we are constantly being bombarded messages with respect to high cholesterol the short version is regardless of whatever diet you choose to follow we want to have ideally lower ldl higher hdl and the lowest possible triglycerides hdl is what goes in and gets rid of the bad cholesterol when you are struggling with obesity you are almost certainly going to have high cholesterol and low HDL and higher triglycerides, which is a recipe for a perfect storm because all of those things can, again, lead back to atherosclerosis. And what does that lead to, class? Heart attack, stroke, all the problems. So you can see that even though there are different paths to get back to the same problem, the problem would be build up inside of your arteries. Hopefully those are three easy ways that you can just kind of remember why though you're constantly hearing about those things as problems with respect to being overweight and guys i don't have a problem with the word fat it doesn't bother me okay am i fat right now i don't know i'm certainly overweight and medically speaking i guess clinically i'm still technically obese okay it's not a pretty word but nothing that we're talking about is pretty we're talking about taking control of our health if i have to get my feelings hurt by hearing the word fat well oh well so be it i, I hope the rest of you feel the same way it's more important for me to use the word that we are all emotionally tied to that and, and take away the emotional power that that word has and help you to understand why the health implications of that far outweigh any ego implications that you might have. I found that helpful. If you are on a weight loss journey or you know someone who's on a weight loss journey, I love to share little tidbits like this. So while we're on our weight loss journey, we are losing weight but gaining knowledge so that we can be healthier and make sure that we don't end up in this situation again down the road and also to give us tools to understand why this weight loss journey isn't just about the number on the scale. It's about all of these things, all of these health implications and all the ways in which your long-term health is going to be improved by losing weight. If you enjoy videos like this, like this video so that other people can find it. Leave me a comment down below. Share with another skinny friend because guys, we're all just trying to become leaner, healthier versions of ourselves. I hope you found that helpful and I'll see you on Friday for my wrap up. Bye guys.